Hi guys and welcome to your daily tarot reading. It's for Friday the 3rd of July 2020. Thanks for joining me. I'm using the Deviant Moon Tarot for this reading. Let's have a look at what this very unusual deck wants you to be aware of. And while I shuffle the cards, I want to say a huge thank you to everyone who supports me on Patreon. I really, really appreciate it. So if you do support me there, you know who you are. Thank you so, so much. It really helps me with cards, camera equipment, having the time to look into videos that I am really interested in, things like that. So it's super, super helpful. Thank you all so much. And speaking of new things and making progress, the Gregory Scott Tarot is coming out in September. So I'm going to start showing you guys some of the cards that are gonna be in the deck. I'm really pleased with the cards. I'm so excited that I'm getting my own tarot deck, yay! Okay, so this is Friday the 3rd of July. We have the six of, the sixth card of the Major Arcana. Looking a bit dodgy there, hiding all the pentacles behind his back. Oh, it's not the six deck of the major arcana, it's the six of pentacles. Then we have the knight of wands. <laughs> what? Um, what are they called? Um, in German they're called Himmelsanbeter, which means um, pray to God. Praying mantis. Yep, praying mantis. Doesn't mean pray to God, it means Pray to the heavens, um, worship the heavens. And then finally, a really jolly looking card, the Three of Swords. There we go. Okay. So, two minor arcana cards, a court card in the middle. The minor arcana cards, they represent temporary circumstances, and the court cards represent the energy of a particular type of person or specific people showing up in your life. Or it can be kind of something interpersonal between you and other people altogether. And this day certainly looks like there's a lot of action going on between you and other people. And you're at the center of this. And let's see what that means. So the Six of Pentacles is the haves and have nots card. It's the opportunity card. It's sometimes you're up and sometimes you're down. And it's important to remember that, that life has a rhythm and that sometimes things just flow naturally and sometimes they're more difficult. In this deck, it's very much about deceit and I suppose fear and shielding yourself and protecting yourself from the perceived wants of the world and being disingenuous about what you really have, hiding all those pentacles behind his back and giving her one, and thinking about your wealth, your prosperity, and trying to safeguard it, instead of realizing that if you were in this position, first of all, she knows that he's hiding all these pentacles, because the whole point of the card is that sometimes you're there and sometimes you're there, so he's forgotten that she has been where he is and that she realizes he's not being honest with her. And then she does realize where he is. So she expects a certain sense of support and he has been where she is. So you expect that he would give willingly and lovingly knowing that he will be in the same position or has been and if he were down there, he would want someone to share and to be positive and to give, give some support and even a leg up and to pull this other person up from where they are. If he gave, what, a few more, they could be even and he could stop this constant back and forth and he could rely on the people around him saying, well, if I'm having a problem, then I know that other people around me are going to help me. Whereas in this case, 
she will remember that he was dishonest. And it's like when he's down, hmm, should I help him? Or should I be true to my nature and remember what happened and not forgive it? And also just give him the bare minimum so that he can survive and get by. The answer is, by the way, in that situation, if someone comes up to you and they say, please help me today, and they've, they haven't helped you in the past when they've had the chance, that's your decision to make. Only you can make that decision. Whether you're going to um, take the high road or whatever it may be. But the thing is, if you're, if you're being, you know, somewhat hmm, unfair or dishonest towards someone else, then just have a look at that. And I think you will be kind of self-aware that what if I was in this position? We've got the moon here overseeing that. So the whole atmosphere is fear and everyone's under pressure and everyone's trying to claw and get for themselves and hide whatever it is they have that's excess. The Knight of Wands is the Knight of, the Knight of Rods. He's someone who struggles with things being blocked and taken out of his reach. So the Knight of Wands has a lot of passion in life and he wants to achieve something. He's, he's deliberate in the action he takes. He wants to be independent. He wants to do something that's meaningful. He wants to live his life purpose. He wants to be fun. And on the other hand, the Knight is trying to balance the element of fire. And sometimes when he does get frustrated, he can be angry. He can be combative. So get into arguments with other people and try and win the argument and get something for himself. My fire, not yours. So that's the kind of theme we're getting. It's there's lack in the world. I have to get what's mine. Otherwise, people are going to take that off me. And I'm going to end up in a very bizarre situation that I don't even understand the night. So you could find yourself transforming into something that you never planned on. And the moon is full now. So what be, what was a little fear, and especially financial worries, because we've got the pentacles here. And pentacles represents money, work, the earth, the human body, health, travel, housing, your everyday position in life, your whether you see beautiful things from the moment you wake up in your Egyptian cotton sheets or whether the first thing you see and wake up is, you know, the mold on the wall and a reminder that you have to do something to get out of the situation you're living in. Otherwise, your health is going to suffer. So if you focus on finances and what you have, and what you don't have, a small fear will become blown up into a huge fear and you won't even recognize yourself anymore and the path you're taking in life and the things that move you forward you won't even recognize where you're going or how you got on this path and it will seem very abstract imagine this scene during this daytime would probably be a knight with a rod on a horse but because of the abstraction of the full moon it seems like a scene out of a nightmare if you forget who you are and you think the world or you, you, you take on board what the world tells you you are. So you have no money, you're poor, and that means that you failed. And if you believe that, that is not true. If you choose to make it true, you won't even recognize yourself. And it's from that place of making yourself unrecognizable even to yourself, that's what's going to break your heart. Because the Three of Swords is heartbreak, loss, betrayal. And each sword is about ideas, thinking, and a belief that you adopt. So I have not made money. I have to ask other people for money to survive, to pay rent. Oh, the shame. I don't even recognize myself anymore. I have failed. How could I end up like this heartbreak? And that's because you take this thought and um, you, you think that it's true. And it isn't true. It's just a circumstance of your life. Or someone... You could be this person and someone demands money from you today or demands that you do an extra three hours at work free of charge because times are tough and we all have to pull together. And you realize that, that that's kind of wrong. Your employers have said, you know what, put, put pressure on the people who work for you because we're making cuts. We don't have the money. We don't want to pay them more. Just try and squeeze them 
to make them work harder. You know that your employees are already hard up. You don't want to lose your job. So you say, I know this is ethically awful. I'm struggling. I know the people working under me are struggling. I'm going to squeeze them for another three hours now when they can, base, they can barely afford childcare as it is. You will take your circumstances in life. I am the manager of this company. I have to do what my bosses say. And you do something that goes against your morals, i.e. you trick your workers into having an even harder life. What has happened to me? How did I become this person? And you think that's the real you and you believe that and that breaks your heart. Oh, look, I worked so hard to get into this job, etc., etc. Look at what I've become. I don't even recognize myself anymore. How did this happen? So the best thing is to, hmm, not to be good, but to, to apply the golden rule. Treat others as you would like to be treated. That will mean you can see yourself properly. And also that the other person is going to hold up a mirror to you and is going to tell you, you're not this person. So you're both, imagine these two are now, she has become, she wears this green little thing and becomes the praying mantis. And he turns these scales into this shell of this ride that she's on. During the moonlight, they think that they've been turned into a beetle and a praying mantis. They have a conversation because earlier they said, hey, we're not going to screw each other over. We're going to be honest with one another. And when the moonlight comes, the moonlight being a symbol of this fear, <gasps> I'm not going to be able to pay my bills. What are people thinking of me? No one's going to love me. You know, the fear that the running anxiety, once you're in that spiral, it just gets worse and worse and worse and you catastrophize and no one will ever love me. And I've made the worst mistake. I'll never work again. When you have community with other people and open dialogue, they will say, hang on a minute, I see you're not a praying mantis, it's a costume, and vice versa. She will say, you're not some sort of metamorphosis Franz Kafka beetle, you're Gregor who's fallen asleep in his, in his bed and is now a beetle. You're still the same person. Don't believe everything the world tells you. Because if you do, you will Put that on yourself and you will break your own heart. Oh my God, look at her toes. <gasps> Aren't those adorable? <laughs> and if you speak to other people, so the communication, you don't turn it inwards to stab your own heart. You take the swords out and you take these swords to build bridges between you and other people. You can use the blade of the sword as a mirror and you say, here, look at it. And you talk to other people. You act according to your values and your beliefs. You're not going to be transformed into some mystical monster. The swords are pulled out and you have the capacity and the opportunity to love. And when you do that, it's really likely that the two of you who could have been enemies and in a really awful position because you're a slave to the world and the system and what you have to do. And instead you say, screw all of that. We're going to hold up a mirror to one another, help each other through the fear. We're both on this journey together and you may even fall in love with yourself because you realize what you've done for yourself you're not taking the world's view of what you are you're pulling that sword out of your heart and saying actually i'm not i determine who i am it's my identity and also i have now opened a dialogue with another human being and that human being is showing me a whole new side of me and i love that and i also I'm seeing that I'm really lovable, so I don't need to cry. I don't need to protect myself. And look, the moon is gone. It's so small, I didn't even notice it. And the fears, which seemed so huge and which tortured you, are now a distant thunderstorm that's gone. Mixed metaphor there, the moon and thunderstorm didn't work. So the moon is medium-sized here, so a small anxiety can turn into huge anxiety if you believe what the world tells you. If you do not you'll be able to let that storm of anxiety and negative feeling pass you by and it will be a distant memory. Make sure you take control of your thoughts and you don't let yourself be informed by what the world tells you. Don't believe everything you read, especially about you. You're not what the world says you are. You're not. Number wise, we've got six and a court card is one, that's seven. And three is 10. 10 is one in numerology, the first number. 
And one is about take action, be independent, be the boss. You say what goes. No boss here. They're both in a similarly difficult position. No boss there. And certainly, I mean, who's the boss in this situation? No one. It's someone who's totally powerless. So you're able to take your power back. And that's the first thing you ought to do is in the morning, say, it's a new day that I've been given. And I'm now going to take this day and make the most of it. And I determine who I am, not other people. And when other people try and put their stuff on you, thank you for sharing and you leave and you walk away and you don't take it on board. You don't have to. You don't have to accept anything that someone else gives you. Whether it's an insult, a present or a trip to the Bahamas, you don't have to accept it if you don't want it. And that goes for good stuff and bad stuff. If you're someone who struggles with that, if you're someone who struggles to assert themselves, if you're codependent, today is the best cure. I do not have to be at the mercy of the world here. I can take my power back and determine who I am. Have an amazing day. If you'd like a personal reading with me, please get in touch by my website. It's gregoryscott.com. On the front page of the website, click on book your reading to order your reading with me. In my personal readings, I use tarot, astrology, and numerology. To draw up your astrology chart, I need your place of birth, date of birth, and time of birth. If you don't have the time of birth, order a chart rectification on the website. That's a process where I work out your time of birth, and that gives me an accurate snapshot of the sky at the moment you were born. It makes your birth chart really, really accurate. And that's important because it changes every four minutes. So... Having the birth time is important. In those readings, I can answer any questions you have. Where to live, your life purpose, vocational talents, what you're blessed with, your strengths, your weaknesses, what to avoid, and really any questions at all. Is this the right person for me? Should I get a dog? When's the best time to move? When is a good time to make investments? And to, when's the best day for a launch? to open the new business. Any question you have. I hope you like this reading. If you do like it, please give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button and share the video online. That'd be awesome. Have an amazing day and I'll speak to you soon.